man, we have a great show for you, but even a better guest. That's right. Gabrielle Walsh is coming on the show. She is from the hit NBC Universal show found with the one and only former ItCap podcast guest, Shanola Hampton. Man, oh, man, everybody's going to love this one. Oh, my gosh. She is such a pure gem. We had such a great time talking to her. Of course, we talk all about found, you guys. You're going to know all kinds of little secrets behind the scenes and all that. Some great funny stories there. But she also dives really deep into what her motivation was to get into acting, the decision to have a baby when she was only 15 herself, and how that affected moving forward with her life and what she was trying to do. She gets deep into some spirituality and how she she just approaches life. Woo! You guys are really, really going to enjoy Yeah, you're right, man. She was just a great guest, and I think it, it's it's a definite no, don't miss interview for sure. That's right. That's right. It's freaking fantastic. <laughs> but that is later on the show. Now, let's get a little crazy. Hello, everyone. So you want to start a podcast but have no idea where to start? Well, Crazy Ant Media is here to help you. We want to assist you finding your VFE. What's VFE, you ask? Well, that is your voice, your format, and your equipment. These are the three biggest essentials you need to start your podcast. All those hours watching nonstop YouTube videos or all those random website links, those are done. Just hop on a Zoom call with us and we'll talk about everything you need to know to create your own podcast and find your voice. Plus, we will send you home with a 12-page packet over everything we just discussed. It's very in-depth. It is definitely a must-need while trying to start your first podcast. Contact us at info at crazyantmedia.com today so that you can start finding your podcast voice for tomorrow. What's up, guys? Oh, my goodness. Welcome back to another episode of It Calf Podcast. It is episode 252 with your host with the most, myself, <laughs> JLo Fantastic, and the one and only Mal. What's up? Man, oh, man. What a freaking day what a freaking episode we are officially in the wedding month so we only have three more episodes for you this month and then your boy this guy right here will be getting married what the heck man it's absolutely three weeks from today our recording day three weeks it's terrifying it's like <laughs> I, you're telling me. You're I telling I don't me. I can't even. I'm just a mess. I have so many emotions about it. I'm thrilled. I'm I'm nervous. I'm 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 happy. I'm sad. So I can only imagine what you're going through. Why am I all of that, guys? If you're new listeners and have no fucking clue, he's marrying my daughter. <laughs> so of course I, I'm all that, and he's got to be just even more of that. But it, it's oh my gosh, it's gonna be amazing it's gonna be exciting we're pumped for it it's just he's been family forever but we're gonna make it official now <laughs> uh, just, yes woo. <laughs> yeah i mean it's one big oh, exhale. yeah one yeah. big exhale but we're finally here we're finally here man oh man i just want to say everybody get a wedding planner we have been engaged <laughs> for two years and it was not enough time it felt like so get a wedding planner if you can afford it uh that is for sure j-lo but just, you know yeah, yeah she exactly. Did, she exactly she did a little she did a little wedding planner thing didn't she yeah I think yeah, so. yeah yeah you know maybe, you know maybe <laughs> but before teasing the rest of the show please be sure to leave a rating on this podcast comment below and tell us what you actually think about the show because leaving rating helps the podcast get seen by more people who enjoy entertainment news plus those who are trying to break into the entertainment industry if you guys don't know and are new to the show we are a one-stop shop for up-and-comers trying to break into the entertainment industry we talk about all the latest and greatest industry news that happens the week of our recording we also interview some amazing celebrity guests that pass along their knowledge how they broke into the entertainment industry and how you can kind of adapt and 
strike start to pave your own way i guess you could say and then of course at the end we like to have a little fun we like to have a little fun for um everybody who loves film and television we give you some of our favorites and our top five segments and a whole bunch of different things um especially like box office all the good stuff for but sure i just wanted to give you a little recap of what the show is actually about for all those new listeners and man oh man it's an amazing thing but this week man we are going to be talking all about Superman. Apparently, there's a name change, not only to just Superman, but there's stuff happening on set. There's photos being leaked. There's all this craziness that we're super excited to deep dive into. I've been loving Avatar The Last Airbender, the live action adaptation on Netflix, and so much more, guys. I mean, so much is happening in the entertainment industry right now, and we cannot wait to talk about it i mean what do you think was your favorite thing that happened in the entertainment industry this past week um definitely all the superman leaks there's there's no doubt about it shogun started and holy shit i fucking jumped on shogun and it is incredible you guys know i'm huge into the japanese culture and it's one of my favorite things i i dive deep into that all the time and i take it very seriously on how it's represented and I'm old, so I watched the original Shogun miniseries way the fuck back in the day with Richard Chamberlain, and I was like, how's this going to be? This is so much better than the original Shogun miniseries. It's freaking fantastic. I'm telling you, visually, it's stunning, and the acting is outstanding, and I I just, yeah, so I was excited about that, and then, well, we'll get to it in industry news, but let's just say I've got a wee bit of excitement about suits the new suits uh, we'll talk about why and 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 i'm just I, but man yeah so much going on and so much and before going, going into it shogun is on hulu and fx right? yes that's where people can watch it yep yep Fantastic. for sure Fantastic. if you guys are interested in all that that's where you can watch it and you can watch avatar the last airbender on netflix um but then of course before getting into the entertainment news we got to plug our merchandise website Go over to www.crazyantmedia.com where you can start rocking the latest and greatest Crazy Ant Media gear. We got the shirts. We got the hats. Different designs available right here, right now. Man, oh man. And we have a 20% off sale going on right now until the 5th, I believe. So be sure to check that out. And just take advantage of everything we have available in our store. We are finally able to be able to say that we are partnering with like brands like Under Armour, some organic brands, and some brands like adidas it's crazy man i'm super super happy and thrilled that our partnership with spreadshirt has been extending to all of the other different companies to where our quality is getting so much better day by day so be sure to head over to our website like i said www.crazyantmedia.com where you can start checking everything out yes um man oh man of course if you guys don't know and for those return listeners we love starting with Disney. That's right. The Mouse House, Zendaya, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Oscar winners Nicolas Cage and Al Pacino are among the first group of presenters for this year's 96 Oscar ceremony. Yes. Um, also presenting are last year's four acting winners, of course, Brendan Fraser from The Whale, Michelle Yeoh and Ki Hyo Hwan, and of course, Jamie Lee Curtis from the Best Picture winner, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Now, Oscar winners Mashallah Ali from Moon, uh, Moonlight and Green Book, uh, Jessica Lange from Tootsie and Blue Sky, Matthew McConaughey, of course, from Dallas Buyers Club, uh, Lupia Nyong from 12 Years a Slave, and Sam Rockwell from Three Billboards Outside Ebony, Missouri, are also taking the stage this year. Now, additional presenters include Bad Bunny, Chris Hemsworth, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Michael Keaton, um, yes. not my Batman, Regina King, um, <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence, Kate McKinnon, Rita Moreno, uh, John Mulaney, Catherine O'Hara, Octavia Spencer, and Rami Yosef. Additionally, all five of this year's Academy Award nominated original songs will be performed at the Dolby Theater stage oh. at the 96th Oscar ceremony. Um, John Baptiste, Becky G, Billie Eilish, Phineas O'Connell, Scott George, and uh, Osage Singers are as variety as previously reported. Ryan Gosling and, of course, Mark Ronson will perform memorable numbers. 
And then, of course, Chris Nolan's Oppenheimer leads the nominations this year with 13 nominations, followed by Yogo Lantamos' Four Things with 11, and then Martin Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon with 10. Now, rounding out the Best Picture lineup is American Fiction, Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie, The Holdovers, Maestro, Past Life, and The Zone of Interest. The Academy Awards will take place on Sunday, March 10th at a new time, which is 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific Mm. at the Dolby Theater in Los Angeles, California. And some exciting news that we have reported on past shows, but the one and only Jimmy Kimmel is returning to host the ceremony, which can be viewed live on ABC and in over 200 territories worldwide. Hopefully it is not another record low like it has been in a couple years past. Um, I know last year wasn't bad, but I mean, you know, we still we're fans of ceremonies and award ceremonies. So we want everybody to watch them because they're fun, man. They're really fun. Yeah. And you won't have to stay up till the crack of dawn for this one. They're starting an hour earlier. So right? hopefully it gets over, you know, a little bit earlier. I don't know. We're going to find out. Speaking of Anatomy of a Fall, Justin Triette's Anatomy of a Fall, which nabbed, of course, five Oscar nominations, which will become available to stream on Hulu starting on March 22nd. Now, if you're not familiar or haven't seen it yet, it's a courtroom drama exploring the collapse of a marriage. The film stars Sandra Huller from The Zone of Interest as a novelist who is put on trial following the mysterious death of her husband and sees her son being called to the witness stand. Now, it missed out on being chosen as Francis' Oscar entry, but the movie has been a critical and commercial hit, including in the U.S where it's become the highest grossing specialized foreign language release post-pandemic. At the Golden Globe Awards this past Sunday, it took home the prizes for Best Non-English Film and Best Screenplay. So, I mean, it's got a chance. It's five Oscar nominations. So if you haven't checked it out, you can still rent it right now on like Prime and Apple and stuff. But March 22nd, after the Oscars, guys, if you're trying to catch it before, it will be available on Hulu. So you got to pay for it if you want to see it before the Oscars. Sorry. Exactly, exactly. That's the one that's next on my list. Everybody's saying it's a really good film. That's what they're saying. Um, Disney released uh, the exciting first look at Tron Ares, a highly anticipated new installment in the groundbreaking Tron franchise. Now, the film started production in January in Vancouver and is slated for release in 2025. Mm. Now, Tron Ares is a follow-up to Disney's 1982 uh, seminal science fiction film Tron and, of course, 2010 sequel Tron Legacy. Now, of course, Tron Ares follows the highly sophisticated program, Ares, who is sent from the digital world into the real world on a dangerous mission, marking humankind's first encounter with AI begins. The feature film stars Jared Leto, (laughs) Greta Lee, Evan Peters, Hassan Mijai, uh, Jody Turner-Smith, Ritu Castro, Cameron McGullen, and Gillian Anderson. So it'll be very exciting to see how that one plays out. I'm excited for it. And no, guys, you didn't hear him wrong. It was in the 80s that the first one came out and all the way in 2010 when the sequel came. A wee bit of a gap there between the sequels, but it was all good. I, I liked both of them. Uh, so I'm excited for it. Uh, let's jump on over. I know you're super excited about this, and so am I, the eyebrow master himself eugene levy has joined only murders in the building for season four at hulu in a recurring role he joins previously announced season four cast members eva langoria and molly shannon in the comedy series and of course alongside the lead steve martin martin short and selena gomez now meryl streep is also set to reprise her role from season three as with other castings for the season exact details of levy's role are being kept under wraps of course Plot details are also scarce for the new season. Aside from the fact it is known the three main characters will make a trip to Los Angeles before returning to New York. Martin, John Hoffman, Short, and Gomez all executive produced this bad boy, if you didn't know, along with Dan Fogelman and Jess Rosenthal. And it was, of course, created by Steve Martin and Hoffman. 20th Century Television is the studio behind it, hence Disney slash 
Hulu. Uh, I love this show. It's always fun. It's always hilarious. It, it keeps you entertained throughout. And you, can you get better? Eugene Levy added to the cast. Come on. By the way, guys, I saw it today in production. Started production today. So they're already filming season four. So there you go. There it is. There it is. I remember when we first reported it on the show way back when. I really didn't think this show would become anything. Now everybody and their mother is on this show. So yeah, it's really I thought cool to it see. was like I remember us talking about it, and I was like, Selena Gomez just doesn't work with Steve Martin and Martin Short. It's like they have a thing together. They're cool. That we know that. Why are they? Th- and yet. I it was really completely does. fucking wrong. She's yeah. brilliant with the three of them. She should just go on the road when they go on the road doing their show now as part of it now. They're a trio now. And yeah, yeah it completely really does agree. work. Everyone loves it. Everyone loves it. Well, we're heading over to Fox, which is basically the Gordon Ramsay network because they're firing <laughs> up another season of Food Stars. And it is shifting filming from California to the UK. The Apprentice-style series from Chef Studio uh, Ramsey Global will continue to feature U.S. contestants, but this time to be filmed across Ramsey's native Britain. The show originated in the U.K. on the BBC, but then the version was axed last year after uh, two series, two seasons, as uh, we like to say. Um, An Australian (laughs) version is due to launch shortly um, on Network 9, Food Star sees food and beverage industry professionals put through the multitude of challenges designed to showcase their skills. As Ramsey searches for the next great culinary entrepreneur, each week one person gets eliminated and the winner is eventually handed a hefty angel investment. Now, season one of the format averaged about 3.3 million multi platform viewers, according to Fox and was the last summer number one show among adults age range from 18 to 49 that is the key demographic if you all didn't know uh it was won by a chemist chris kaken um who created the world's first printed beverage that's Mm. interesting other contestants include the founder of malibu's pizza grill and creator of fat milk that's right fat milk um, the recommissioned is the latest Ramsey franchise to establish itself via his wide range deal with Fox. He also fronts and produces Next Level Chef, Hell's Kitchen, Master Chef, Master Chef Junior, and Kitchen Nightmares. You see why I say Fox is Gordon Ramsay's network. <laughs> I mean, what? he's basically the 50 Cent of Fox. I mean, so. seriously, he's got a show on every single night. That's why they were booting yeah. other shows off the network. They needed to make room for Gordon. It's, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. All right, let's jump on over to Warner Brothers. So, after the subpar response from the first one and a long delay before getting the sequel, was the excitement there? Were people wanting to see Dune 2? Apparently, the answer is yes. Dennis DeVille's Dune Part 2 has arrived, making a mighty $12 million in previews at the box office from more than 3,400 theaters. Now, big screen IMAX showings made up $4.5 million of that huge haul. Warner Brothers and Legendary's epic sci-fi sequel is now projected to make between $70 million and $80 million on its opening weekend, with some estimates even putting it as high as $90 million. Now, a debut that big would make it the largest movie opening since last October's horror hit Five Nights at Freddy's which launched with 80 million. The preview grosses are more than double those of Dune Part 1 which made 5.1 million but keep in mind it debuted simultaneously in theaters and on HBO Max during the pandemic. So you can't really gauge that as far as the opening. Now, part one did open with $41 million and ended its run with $402 million worldwide, one of the few box office successes during the pandemic. The box office has been quiet so far this year, so Dune 2 is a much-needed shot in the arm for movie theaters. So we'll see if it can stick true to those estimates, but it looks like it's off to a really good start. Completely agree. Completely agree. Yeah, I don't think anything's broken over like 50 million. I mean, Bob Marley came close in the 30s, I think, but I don't think anything's broken uh, 50 million. So we'll see. I definitely think it's going to do well, and I'm definitely more intrigued by this one than I was the first one. This one looks like it's more action-packed. Yeah. Um, 
been a little, I mean, we've talked about it on previous shows, but yeah, I'm I'm excited to see this one. They've done I a really better am. marketing job for this one they too. Have. I felt like they really didn't market the first one, maybe because of the pandemic or for whatever, but it just didn't get a lot of pop. You know, this it one didn't. they're doing great marketing, it and and yeah, I agree with you. Agreed, agreed. Um, well, we teased it a little bit earlier. Kevin Costner has reversed the revealed the first trailer for Horizon American Saga, <laughs> the first of this planned four part epic about the American West. Now, Horizons Chapter One and Two have will have a dual theatrical release from Warner Brothers, with the first film hitting theaters on June twenty eighth, and the second film hitting theaters on August sixteenth. Now, doesn't that sound too close for comfort? Yes, it does for us specifically. <laughs> um, Costner's goal in crafting the trailer was to find the moments in the film that would translate as a sense of the ride audiences will take in these grand films. Now, the official description explains that the film explores the lure of the Old West and how it was won and lost through blood, sweat, and tears mm. of many now, spanning four years of of the Civil War from 1861 to 1865, Costner's ambitious cinematic adventure will take audiences on an emotional journey across the country at war with itself. Now, experienced through the lenses of families, friends, and foes, all attempting to discover what it truly means to be the United States of America. Mm. Now... The three-minute trailer introduces Horizon's ensemble cast, of course led by Costner's Hayes Ellison, who rides into the flame with a stunning landscape of Utah on full display and tees up the action as the film explores triumphs and tragedies brought on by an ideology, ideolo- ideology <laughs> of Manifest Dynasty. The clip shares the first look at his co-stars, Sienna Miller, Sam Worthington, Gina Malone, Abdi Lee, Michael Rooker, Danny Hudson, Luke Wilson, Isabel Furman, Jeff uh, Faley, Will Patton, uh, Takinta Means, Owen Cow So, or Owen Cow Shu, Ella Hunt, and Jamie Campbell Bauer. Now among the footage is a harrowing scene in which Miller's family is attacked by unseen assailants shooting arrows into their house and burning it down. Now the family is separated as Miller and her daughter hide in a basement while her son goes with his father to fight back. Mm. Now the clip also shows Wilson's character leading a group of settlers along the torrentious voyage west. Um, much of the footage simply teases rather than directly explains what the film's plot actually is, offering glimpses of the Native American populations that will be featured in the film and possibly a romantic storyline between Costner's Ellison and Lee's character. Now, in addition to starring in the film, Costner directed from a script he co-wrote with John Bayard. Now, Horizon American Saga is Costner's fourth directorial effort following 2003's Open Range and 1997's Postman, The Postman, and 1990's the Oscar-winning picture, Dances with Wolves. Um, so, yeah, I think I at least want to see the first one just to see how it starts off, but I feel like if it's trash, I'm not going to watch the other three. Um, but I'm curious because I haven't seen the trailer yet, so I'm going to watch it after the recording of this episode. Uh, the trailer is beautiful. It, I mean, Costner always captures the cinematic, you know, this the picturesque scenes that he gets. And in conjunction with the cinematography, is it's beautiful. I just, I can't get excited about this one. I don't know yet. I'm like with you. I, I just, I guess I'll check the first one out, but I, I just don't know. I'm not sure if he can ever recapture the glory of Dances with Wolves, which is what I think he's desperately trying to do. And I just, I think that was his thing and i don't i don't know (laughs) i don't know all right now this next one we also teased super 
excited about it, no pun intended. James Gunn's super plan has clearly evolved as he's been busy writing the script and preparing to make Superman Legacy, his first project, of course, for the comic book movie universe that he runs with Peter Safran under DC Studios, for Warner Brothers, of course. Now, Gunn marked Superman's birthday, which was February 29th, to announce the new movie will actually now simply just be called Superman. That's right, he's dropped Legacy. It's just Superman now. So why? He just said that as he was writing it, when he started off the first draft, it was Superman Legacy, and as it progressed, he just realized by the time he got to the shooting script, it was just Superman. Okay, all right, James, that's fine. Sure, whatever. (laughs) As part of his social media posts announcing the change, he also posted the first look at the official insignia from the chest of his chosen Superman, with David Cornsweet playing the character in this incarnation, of course. Now, this is what gets me really fired up. The new symbol is inspired by Alex Ross, the artist. If you guys know him, his stuff is epic. Kingdom Come, all that. And what I really love is anytime Alex Ross draws Superman, the S is huge. And as you can see from this picture that he teased, the S is going to be huge on the chest, which is going to be bad. Now, Superman's uh, cast also includes Rachel Brosnahan, of course, as Lois Lane, Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor, Skylar Giazondo as Jimmy Olsen, Nathan Fillion as Guy Gardner, a.k.a. Green Lantern, Isabella Mersad as Hawkgirl, Anthony Kerrigan as Metamorpho, Terrence Rosemore as Otis, Edai Gathagi as Mr. Terrific, Sarah Sampino as Eve Tessmacher, and Maria Gabriella DeFaria as Angela Spica, a.k.a. The Engineer. Now, Gunn's brother, Sean, a.k.a. Kirk from Gilmore Girls, will show up as the villainous Maxwell Lord, but I'm not sure he's going to be villainous in this one. Uh, I'm hearing some stuff that maybe he's not. While there are reports of, of course, the cameo by Millie Alcock as the freshly minted Supergirl ahead of her own film, and, guys, literally just today, as we're recording, we found out that the one and only Wendell Pierce, perhaps best known for his work as a detective on HBO's seminal crime series, The Wire, and Rachel's daddy on Suits, if you <laughs> you maybe you know him there. He's been cast, apparently, in the iconic editor-in-chief role of the Daily Planet, Perry White. Great Caesar's ghost. Now, the new last son of Krypton will fly on the screens on the 25th of July next year um i fucking loved the picture of the suit uh there was immediately leaks of the whole suit everywhere they're all fake every one of them is fake he is confirmed they're all fake if you have seen a picture of him in the full suit it's not real all we know is we got the s we know what the s looks like um i'm pumped for this one man if alex ross inspired the costume and he's decided to just go with superman and it's they're already posting videos uh rachel brosnahan posted this adorable video of on tiktok with lex and superman poking in on her and i mean it's just they look great they look i I mean with corn sweat with the hat on you can't really i think they're trying to hide the curl they're trying to hide if he's got the hairdo or not but it was a kid. I just, I'm pumped. And I didn't want to be pumped for this. I was nervous. Yeah, as you guys know, Christopher Reeve is my Superman. He is. And I'm kind of like, you're really going to just call it Superman? Because that's what my Superman was just called. Superman. Just Superman. They eventually progressed it as Superman the movie. But when I fucking went and saw it in the theater, it was just Superman. So now this one is just, but I, I can't, I can't lie, bro. I don't know about you, but I am fucking pumped for this. I, I just I pumped. <laughs> yeah, it's the first time in a while that I'm honestly really excited about a DC movie. Um, but I mean, I was really excited about Blue Beetle, but I feel like this level of excitement is different just because this character is so iconic. So I think it's, you know, there's a lot at stake here. We talked about it last week um, about, you know, if this doesn't work, just stop doing them. Just, just stop. Yeah. Because it's, I mean, obviously it's not going anywhere, but... I feel like, you know, if anyone can do it, like we said last week, it's James Gunn. So we, we have faith. We have promise. Um, so we're <laughs> we're hopeful, man. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Uh, but something else we're really excited about is The Last of Us, season two. And it added four new cast members. Now I'm talking Dami Ramirez, Ariel Barrier, uh, Tati Gabrielle and Spencer Lord have all joined the cast of the hit HBO series 
for its second season. Mm. Now, Ramirez will play Manny, described as a loyal soldier whose sunny outlook bailies the pain of old wounds and fears that he will fail his friends when they need him most. Now, Burial will play Mel, said to be a young doctor whose commitment to saving lives is challenged by the realities of war and tribalism. And then Gabrielle has been cast as Nora, a military medic struggling to come to terms with sins of her past. And Lord will appear as Owen, a gentle soul trapped in a warrior's body, condemned to fight an enemy he refuses to hate. Now, these are the latest forecastings for the second season of The Last of Us. Now, aside from returning stars Pedro Pascal as Joel and Bella Ramsey as Ellie in the new season, we'll also feature Isabella Marst as Dina, young Mizano as Jesse, and Caitlin Deaver as Abby. Now, of course, Catherine O'Hara was also cast, but it's in an undisclosed role. They're keeping that way under wraps. They are. But very excited about season two. It's a hit. Obviously, Pedro did not think he was going to win at the SAG Awards, so that was an, a hilarious speech. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about it. It's a good thing to see. It's a good thing to see. Oh, without doubt. They're taking very seriously casting this thing to try to stay as accurate to the game as possible, and so far, so good. The fans of the game are loving it, so... Uh, hey, let's jump on over to Paramount. This one sounds exciting. Paramount Pictures has boarded the new horror film, Vicious, led by Dakota Fanning and directed by Brian Bertino. Now, Fanning will star as a young woman who is left a strange present by a late-night visitor and quickly realizes she is fighting for her life after slipping down a disturbing rabbit hole contained inside the gift. The studio has dated the film for an August 8th, 2025 release. Bertino previously directed The Dark and the Wicked, as well as the sleeper genre hit The Strangers. Now, Atlas Entertainment and Richard Suckle from American Hustle are producing this bad boy. Melinda Whitaker will executive produce. I'm totally down for it, dude. I love Dakota Fanning, and hey, you're putting her in a horror film? Let's go! <laughs> Sounds interesting, that's for sure. Now, Cote Di Pablo and Michael Weatherly are returning to NCIS, the franchise. Of <laughs> A decade after both the stars left the original CBS series, now the duo are set to reprise their roles as uh, Viva David and Tony Dondo and in a new 10 episode still untitled NCIS, series for Paramount+. Plus. Now, John McNamara from Turbo and the Magicians will serve as showrunner and executive producer. Now, slated to start production later this year, the new NCIS will reunite Di Pablo, who left the original show after season 11, and Weatherly, who left after season 13. Now, the two also will serve as executive producers alongside McNamara, who wrote the premiere episode and will serve as showrunner, of course. Here's a description of the new show. Now, after Aziza's supposed death, Tony left the NCIS team to go raise their daughter. Now, years later, uh, Visa wi was discovered alive, leading her to complete one final mission with NCIS before she was reunited with Tony and their daughter in Paris. Now, since then, and where we find them in the new Paramount Plus original series, Tony and Visa have been raising their daughter, Tali, together. Now, when Tony's security company is attacked, they must go on the run across Europe and try to figure out who is after them and maybe even learn to trust each other again so that they can finally have their unconventional happy ever after. But then, according to Paramount+, Plus, since the launch of the streamer, the NCIS franchise has consistently been ranked among one of the top five franchises on the service in terms of hours watch so it only makes sense they're bringing one of these shows back so that's awesome yeah i just like i have so many thoughts on like why why does paramount keep michael weatherly around this guy has Great still question. i'm all for redemption i'm all for second chances i'm all for but this guy still has not owned up to even doing anything wrong. I'm sorry, but when your network pays a woman $9 million to basically shut up and go away, you're saying you did what she said you did. Um, I just, and he bragged about being buddies with Les Moonves. That's enough. I just, get rid of this guy. I know the character's popular on NCIS, and I know he was popular on Bull, and I just, but, you know, you keep rewarding 
somebody for doing I, I don't know. I got a lot of thoughts on that one. Terrence Winter, <laughs> who stepped down as the showrunner of the Sylvester Stallone starring mob drama Tulsa King after its first season, is back apparently as a writer on the Paramount Plus series upcoming second season, in addition to continuing his duties as executive producer. Now, the series created by Taylor Sheridan has opted not to bring back in a replacement for Winter in line with the practice of the other Sheridan series produced by 101 Studios, which don't have a traditional showrunner. Instead, Tulsa King has hired a director slash executive producer whose deal is still being finalized. Now, if you don't remember us telling you, Winter stepped down from the showrunner post over creative differences with Sheridan. Winter had spoken out about how much he enjoyed working with Stallone and loved the characters on the show. And he was set to remain as an executive producer on Tul Tulsa King while focusing on his other projects. Now, as the writer strike changed plans, Winter's post-strike schedule actually allowed him to return to the show as a writer. So that's why he's coming back. Tulsa King, which is expected to start production shortly on season two in Atlanta for a fall premiere, is, of course, executive produced by Sheridan, Winter, Stallone, David C. Glasser, Ron Burkle, Bob Yari, David Hutkin, and Braden Aftergood. Season one of Tulsa King, get this guys, because this has been working for them well, so they're going to continue it. It will air on CBS this summer, yes, on CBS, leading into season two's launch on Paramount+. Plus. They've been doing this with Yellowstone. It's been extremely successful, so it only makes sense that they would do it with another one. Um, I love it. I'm a huge fan of the show. I thought season one was great, so I'm excited for season two, and I'm all in, man. Let's go. For sure, for sure. Well, Michael Fassbender is in negotiations to star in The Department, an espionage thriller series executive produced by George Clooney. Now, set to star in shooting in London this spring, <laughs> The Department <laughs> is based on The Bureau, the hit French spy show created, directed, and produced by Eric Rochnant. Uh, it has already been given a straight-to-series order by Showtime. Showtime. Uh, the series is produced by Clooney and Grant Hesloff. Smokehouse Pictures, MTV Entertainment Studios, and 101 Studios. Now, the original French show starred uh, Mashu Sakatwist as uh, Guillemoun de Bailey, alias uh, Paul Lepteris, alias Matro, a member of the uh, Kandelstein branch of the French Secret Services, mm. DGSE, who returns to the show to his home based after a six-year mission to Damascus um, as he struggles to let go of his false identity and inflict a fair with the Syrian woman. Um, he finds himself playing a double game between the DGSE and the CE or the CIA. Never good to get in between two secret organizations like that. Should uh, not. It sounds interesting, not. though. Sounds it does. Interesting. And I'm a Fastbender fan, so okay, I'll give it a look. I'll give it a look. Uh, this one I don't. This is following along this next story, like in the same thing they did with Bosch. Oh, we canceled Bosch. Now here's Bosch Legacy, and it stars Bosch, and it's basically the same fucking show. Apparently they like this thing. Paramount Plus, Showtime, MTV, Entertainment Studios, and 101 Studios are teaming for a new series loosely based on the hit Showtime series, Ray Donovan. This one will be titled The Donovans, and guess who's going to be in it? Ray Donovan. <laughs> like, I just don't even know. The series will be fully written by Ronan Bennett with Guy Ritchie attached to direct and executive produce. It will be available to Paramount Plus with Showtime subscribers later this year. Now, the official description of the series states... With the most powerful clients in Europe, the Donovans will see family fortunes and reputations at risk. Odd alliances unfold and betrayal around every corner. And while the family might be London's most elite fixers today, the nature of their business means there is no guarantee what's in store for tomorrow. Now, Ray Donovan originally aired on Showtime from 2013 to 2020 for seven seasons. The series starred Lee Schreiber, of course, in the title role, alongside a cast that included Paula McElmonson, John Voight, Eddie Merson, Dash Muk, and Pooch Hall, among others. Um, okay, whatever works for you. If you want to just create series that are basically just continuations of the series you say you can't, go for it. Sure. <laughs> just add that. Uh, heading over to NBC Universal. NBC has given a straight to series order to The Hunting Party, and it's a drama series from JJ Bailey and Jack Coburn. 
Mm. Now, per the official logline, the hunting party is a high-concept crime procedural about a small team of investigators who are assembled to track down and capture the most dangerous killers across our country who we've ever seen, all of whom just escaped from the top-secret prison that does, is not supposed to exist. The hunting party is produced by Universal Television. Bailey, who is under an overall deal with the studio, created the series and wrote the pilot. He serves as co-showrunner and executive producer along with Coburn, um, who also has a first look deal with UTV. So that only makes sense. Only makes sense. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Ooh, boy, we teased it. And I got to tell you, super Pump. This just keeps getting better and better, y'all. The Suit spinoff pilot set in Los Angeles at NBC called Suits LA, obviously, has cast Lex Scott Davis in a lead role. Now, Davis joins previously announced cast members Stephen Amell and Josh McDermott in the pilot, which looks to expand on the success of the USA Network series Suits following its remarkable resurgence on streaming in recent months. Duh. Now, Davis will star as Erica Rollins, described as a savvy and strong-willed rising star. Erica works for Ted Black. She's shrewd enough to test the loyalty of your associates, only to admire some of them for not having any. Um, this character's amazing. I'm just going to tell you that. Now, we are super excited about this one. We're going to say this right now. It's going to be a huge hit. It's going to be epic. And it will capture the success of the original Suits, but in a whole different way. How do we know this? Let's just say Logan and I have some sources that we trust very much. And trust us when we tell you, this one's not going to be one that you want to miss. This, it's going to blow you away. It's going to blow you, I'm just saying. I can't wait to see who else they cast. I'm, I'm pumped yeah. to see the remainder of the cast. There are three or four more main characters that still need to come. So, we'll see. We'll see. You'll see. Yvonne Strazinski and Scott Speedman have been tapped for the lead roles in the upcoming Peacock series, Teacup. Now, this is described as a horror thriller. Teacup hails from the writer Ian McCulloch with James Wan and Atomic Monster attached to executive produce. Now, this is inspired by Robert McCammon's novel, Stinger. The series is said to follow a desperate group of people in rural Georgia who must come together and face a mysterious threat in order to survive. Hmm. Now, Stravosky will play Maggie Chinowith, now, and Speedman will play James Chinowith. I wonder if they're together. Ooh. Or brother and sister. <laughs> um, Teacup is one of the two recent series orders for Atomic Monster at Peacock. Now, it was recently announced that the streamer had ordered untitled espionage sci-fi thriller series from the company with Simulu attached to Star. Now, Thomas Anderson is the writer and co-showrunner of that series, with Jennifer Gale also joining as co-showrunner. So all these espionage like type things, uh, they're very horror thriller like you know, boom like I don't know. I feel like the the NCIS Criminal Minds thing is really big right now, or at least going to be really big in the next couple of months. I yeah, I totally agree. People just like crime. <laughs> <laughs> what's up with that it's, i don't know whether it's true crime whether it's fake crime on these shows like i don't know man it's just kind of crazy all right let's jump on over to sony this one's exciting in his first feature film role in almost 10 years if you can believe that uh joshua jackson has joined the cast of sony pictures latest installment of the karate kid now ben wang who led the cast of disney plus series is american born chinese is actually starring in the coming of age martial arts drama which also, we'll see Jackie Chan and Ralph Macchio reprising their iconic characters to continue the mythology of the original franchise. Now, plot details are being kept under the mat, <laughs> but the new installment will bring the story to the East Coast and focus on a teen from China who finds strength and direction via martial arts and a tough but wise mentor. Or two. Details on Jackson's role were unavailable, but he is described as one of the main characters in the movie. So uh, I'm excited about that. I'm a huge fan of Joshua Jackson, and I, I love that we're going to see him. Uh, I don't know how I feel about the movie. I'm like, how much more can we do in this franchise? But I like Joshua Jackson, so we'll see. Completely agree. Completely agree. 
Well, just like Superman, a lot of things have been leaking and being teased about this film. The Jackson 5 have found their harmony once again for the upcoming biopic Michael from director Antoine Fuqua and Oscar-winning producer Graham King. Now, after a worldwide search for the lead filmmakers to cast Jackson's nephew, Jafar Jackson, as the king of pop himself, with nine-year-old Giuliano Cruvaldi as the younger version of Michael. Mm, well said. Now, fans have been eagerly awaiting to see who would round out the cast of the Jackson family. This is a very predominant family in music history. Now, the film, which is scheduled to hit theaters on April 18th of 2025, is currently in production. Now, Oscar nominee Coleman Domingo assures the role of the family patriarch Joe Jackson and Nia Long as mother Catherine Jackson, plus Miles Teller as lawyer John Brenka. Now, the eight actors who will portray Jackson's four brothers who come together to form the massively popular singing group the Jackson Five yes. have all been revealed. Jamal R. Henderson plays Jermaine in the film's later years, while Jaden Harville will play the younger version. Now, Trey Horton and Jalen Linden Hunter share the role of Marlon Jackson. Rand Hill and Judah Edwards are Tito, and Joseph <laughs> David Jones and Nathaniel <laughs> Logan Mc mcintyre will play elder and younger versions of jackie jackson respectively i think yeah this is another biopic that's going to be huge um i really hope it's not a disappointment so there it is same and you know who we haven't heard though we've heard all the castings of all the um males but where's no latoya janet. or janet yeah. well, i mean uh, who's gonna play latoya and janet because they were around it's not like yeah. they weren't around when the jackson five were popular so th that's gonna be interesting to see yeah i'm sure that'll that's coming now that we said that we'll find out <laughs> for sure because <laughs> that's how it works let's jump on over to Lionsgate, and i know you're excited about this me too bmf has been renewed for season four at stars the news comes ahead of the upcoming season three premiere of the crime drama now season three of the series will debut today fantastic oh uh, i love that i'm gonna have to, to as soon as we're done i'm gonna watch it <laughs> It's at midnight on the Stars app before its linear network premiere at 8 p.m. in the U.S. and 9 p.m. in Canada. The series remains one of Stars' biggest hits, averaging 10.6 million viewers in multi-platform viewing, according to the network. Now, production on Season 4 is set to begin this spring in Atlanta. BMF Season 3 stars Demetrius Lil Meach Flannery Jr. as Demetrius Flannery, Da Vinci as Terry Flannery, Russell Hornsby as Charles Flannery, McCullough Brianna White as Lucille Flannery, Steve Harris as Detective Bryant, Kelly Who as Detective Jin. So they're all coming back. If you've been a fan of the show and you've seen it, they're all coming back. Um, Yeah, I'm pumped about this. I, I love that they're continuing the story. I am a fan of the show, so good. Love it. Love it. Well, we're heading over to Amazon MGM Studios. R. Lance Hill, the screenwriter of the original 1989 film Roadhouse, is filed a lawsuit against Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Studios and its parent company, Amazon uh -oh. Studios, for the copyright infringement. And now in the filing, Hill uses his pen name David Lee Henry, claims Amazon ignored his ability to reclaim the rights for his 1986 screenplay as they mounted a remake starring Jake Gyllenhaal out for march 21st on prime video now hill's lawsuit alleges that he fled or he filed a petition with the u.s copyright office in 2021 requesting that the copyright return to him after united artists claim he was it was set to expire in november of 2023 now, the suit goes on to allege that Amazon ignored his claims and proceeded with the film, using artificial intelligence to replicate the voices of actors for ADR during the sag after strike in effort to complete the film before the November 10th deadline. Now, Hill's suit claims that the film was actually not completed until January, months after the uh, copyright deadline had passed. It also raises issues with key literary uh, elements substantially similar to Hill's original script, including a detailed uh, exhibit demonstrating a side-by-side -side of the original plot points and those Amazon's retelling. 
Now the WGA awarded Hill a story by acknowledgement on the remake and credit based on the motion picture Roadhouse screenplay by David Lee Henry and Hilary Hinken. Now story by David Lee Henry as well. So all of these things he is being credited, but it's still not enough for him. Now, the suit seeks a uh, declaratory relief and aims to block distribution of the film. Mm. An Amazon MGM studio spokesperson slammed Hill's suit in a statement to Variety saying that the lawsuit filed by R. Lance Hill regarding Roadhouse today is completely without merit and numerous allegations are uh, uh, calligraphy uh, categorically false. The film does not use any AI in place of actors' voices. We look forward to defending ourselves against these claims. Now, the action remake has been mirrored in controversy in recent months. Director Doug Lemon, or Lyman, um, is boycotting the film's release due to Amazon's decision to not open the movie theaters, open it in movie theaters. Amazon will premiere at South by Southwest on March 8th, but uh, Lyman has said... He will definitely not attend. I mean, there's been some bad press along with this film, and nobody really wants this film, so why is it happening? Why well, is this one being made, and we're not still not being able to see, you know, fucking Coyote or whatever from exactly. the Brothers, which we hear is amazing. So it just, the entertainment industry makes wrong decisions sometimes it, it does and gyllenhaal is disputing lyman's claim he said he knew from the very beginning that amazon made it clear it was going straight to streamer not yeah. ever going to be theatrically released he said he appreciates his director's push for th cinema but that he knew the whole time it was going to the streamer so that's why he's showing up at the premiere he said well I mean, yeah uh, you want to take this one? I know I've got I got suits and Superman, and I know you're a huge fan of this one. So go for it, my man. I am. We're jumping over to Netflix, the streaming giant. Avatar: The Last Airbender is the most watched title on Netflix from February 19th to February 25th, which included the series' first five days availability. Now, based on Nickelodeon's animated hit series of the same name, the live-action adaptation reached 21.2 million viewers in its first four days of availability. That's crazy. Um, that puts it at 15% above the September debuts of the most recently comparable title, One Piece, uh, live-action anime uh, from the manga series of the same name, mm. which was also the basis for a cult favorite anime like i just said um it's a good sign for netflix that avatar outpaced one piece's eight and 18 and a half million view debut though this was expected a given um comparatively larger appetite for the avatar ip in the united states the series staying power will also be important in determining if the franchise's the franchise's uh, availability for netflix now, for comparison, One Piece took first place on the Netflix's top 10 three times in a row now and remained on the chart for eight weeks total. So that's why we really haven't gotten a, you know, renewal for season two yet. But yeah. I think that's coming. I think a lot of people are really enjoying this. Something I really love about Avatar The Last Airbender, the live action one that's on Netflix, is that it's still rated the same as the cartoon that was on um nickelodeon so a lot of the younger kids now can watch the live action and it's still appropriate i love that but it's still in that darker tone to where us who watch the original can also still enjoy this so i'm loving it man i think the fight sequences are great and the storytelling and the actors who they got to play the characters resemble so much like the cartoon characters so good job netflix good job that's awesome that's awesome i love that uh, I love this show too. Netflix is the Lincoln Lawyer. I'm, I, I jumped on board. I was skeptical at first, but it's brilliant. You know, just a little piece of thing before I uh, did you know that F Tim and Faith's daughter is dating the lead of this show? No idea. Apparently, there's like a 412 year age gap between the two of them. But uh, <laughs> mom and dad seem yeah. to be fine with it. And uh, I just saw that. It was just random. I saw it. I'm like, what? Is that true? But apparently it is true. Good for them, man. Age is just a number. You go. You're two consenting adults. You go wherever you want to go. Do what you want to do. Anyway, Netflix is the Lincoln Lawyer is bulking up its season three cast with four new actors joining the fold. Marin Dungey, who I love, Alan Morian, John Oof. 
I should have let you read this one. Pearson Lalalalo and Philip Anthony Rodriguez. They join returning stars, of course, Manuel Garcia Rothflo as Mickey Holler, Becky Newton as Lorna, Jazz Raquel as Izzy, Angus Sampson as Cisco, and Yaya DaCosta as Andrea Freeman. Now, the recurring cast also includes Nev Campbell, Elliot Gould, Krista Warner, Fiona Renee, Devin Gray. Dungey will apparently portray Judge Regina Turner a former public defender who is younger and more progressive than most judges in the district, but whether that's a benefit to Mickey or not remains to be seen. Morian plays Eddie Rojas, a fitness buff and former babysitter to Mickey's daughter, Haley, who needs a very good lawyer. Luckily, Mickey can help him and then offers for him the opportunity of a lifetime. That guy, Paris Lizzelulu, plays William Forsythe, a seemingly non-threatening prosecutor that Mickey is excited to go up against. But once the trial starts, it's clear nothing is as it seems. And finally, Anthony Rodriguez will play Adam Suarez, the chief deputy district attorney to whom prosecutor Andrea Freeman reports and who proves to be a force with whom she must reckon. Now, if you didn't know, mm. season three currently in production consists of 10 episodes. And this time around, it's based on the fifth book in the Lincoln Lawyer's series by michael Connolly called the gods of guilt so there you go yeah that sounds very interesting i mean i'm excited to see it because yeah it seems like it's doing really well on netflix so it that's is awesome. yeah um well we're heading over to apple right now the last story of the entertainment news so alfred woodward has joined the cast of the upcoming Apple TV Plus drama series, The Last Frontier. Mm. Now, Woodward joins previously announced series lead Jason Clark in the show, as well as cast members Haley Bennett, Dominic Cooper, Simone Kessel, Tate Blum, and Reservation Dogs alum Dallas Goldtooth. Um, Apple has given the show a 10-episode order. Now, per the official description, the series follows U.S. Marshal Frank Remnick, who is Clark. The lone marshal is charged of the quiet, rugged barons of Alaska, whose jurisdiction is turned upside down when a prison transport plane crashes into the remote wilderness. Now, setting free the dozens of violent inmates tasked with protecting the towns he's vowed to keep safe, mm. he begins to suspect the crash wasn't an accident, but the first step of the well-crafted plan with international political implications. Now, Woodward will star as Bradford, described as a top leader in the CIA. This will be the second Apple series in which Woodward has appeared. Um, she also are previously starred alongside Jason Momoa in the sci-fi drama C, which ran for three seasons. Now, The Last Frontier hails from, hails from creators John Bokenkamp and Richard D. Overito. Um, sure. Both serve as executive producers <laughs> alongside Clark. And Sam Hargrave will direct the pilot, executive produce, and Apple Studios will also produce. So that's awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah. Sounds exciting. For sure, for sure. But what also is exciting is our guest segment. Yes. That's right. We got the one and only Gabrielle Walsh coming on the show from NBC Universal's Found. You can also watch episodes right now on Peacock. We get really just deep and have a nice free-flowing conversation with her about life, about the show, about all of our crazy career paths, and so much more, man. I think everybody's going to love this one. Oh, me too, man. She's so inspiring, and she's just got this upbeat, pleasant attitude. It's like we could have talked to her forever, literally. It, it, she's that fun to talk to. And she shares a great behind-the-scenes story from the show about a prank that they pulled on her. You don't want to miss that. It was so funny. It's a good one. Uh, yeah, this I love this. This is a great interview. For sure, for sure. Well, here she is. Gabrielle Walsh, welcome inside the Crazy Ant Farm. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Oh, we are doing awesome. Yeah. We are doing awesome. So Living good. life. So, so much good. stuff going yes. on, but we're here. We're burning down the house with the excitement. <laughs> That's of right. The show. We're That's so right. Excited. <laughs> Literally. Yes. Literally. We are so excited to talk. We knew you were going to bring the heat, right? We, we knew it. It's, it's going to get hot in here. It's going to be fine. We're going to light it up. It's going to be amazing. Um, we are so excited to talk to you, though, because we are huge fans of the show. Um, uh, it's just brilliant, and, and we have been so blessed to be able to talk to several of y'all and 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 we're just like pumped about it um but 
we're a big fan. Yeah, you've been in just, you've been Lucifer and Shameless and, and on Paranormal and all these things that we were like, oh, wow, we, we love her. <laughs> it's going to be so amazing to talk to you. So, <laughs> but what we like to do to start off all the interviews is, and everything is to kind of dive deep into the background a little bit, because you know, we're curious always to find out, was this something you always anticipated doing? Did you see yourself always saying, I'm going to be an actor. This is what I want to do. Did you kind of fall into it? Did you have an event that got you there? How'd you get started? There were many events. <laughs> many, many. <laughs> okay. Many fantastical events. You know, one in particular was like the Christmas play performance at school that you do. And they gave me one line. Sure. Line and I got to like improv and I was supposed to mess up the ABCs and so I improv like different radio stations and I got a huge laugh and I'm like this is it it's over it's <laughs> over I'm taking over from here I love that um, but yeah that was a that was a big spark for me but I think mostly it was like how passionate my father was about like cinema and different films and and the old films and their stories and how they would paint those stories and just watching you know watching him watch these films and how deeply they resonated within him you know like to the point of tears at times mm. and you know like i it, it just uh i was in awe of that and how uh people could do that and to tell this life and to have fun and to be a child forever <laughs> and to be able to play yes. now within the dynamics of like trauma and things like that then moving forward the different things that i experienced in my life um feeling isolated um i just i, I felt as though i was not alone in this and that there was a lot inside of me that i still had yet to understand but wanted to tell the story of this and that it was important and that would connect me with others and um, connect that, you know, like love and passion. And it wasn't something that I felt like I took really seriously until like my junior year. And um, I mean, I, I'm not sure if y'all are familiar, but I do have a daughter. Yep. Uh, yep. I had my daughter very young. I had her when I was 15, going on 16 in high school. And that was a huge shift. I mean, respectfully, <laughs> you would think for me in terms of just like living beyond my self and insecurities and, you know, what I was going to bring to the world of this person and acting had been something that was like a secret passion of mine that I kept behind closed doors because I didn't want to tell people and have them tell me that it's ridiculous. Um, and when I was a, a junior in high school, I was like, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. I know it's for me. I feel strongly about it and I have to, you know, like, tell my story and I feel like I understand being from a diverse background having a Irish American father even though he was like more American he didn't have an accent <laughs> um, <laughs> but an Irish father from like the suburbs and over in Detroit I mean he wasn't you know he didn't he wasn't all suburb but you know that's how he got my mama who was over on the south side it was like <laughs> you know young black mama you know who was just full of life and energy and creativity and she lended so much to that that side of me that creative side of me that I was like uh, in in all of these different dynamics of life I was like there's so much that I feel like is misunderstood um and segregated within different parts of life mm -hmm. that I feel like I can bring all of that within my person and my art to help us relate to this thing called the human condition of journeying through life and feeling and finding out and figuring out and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the <laughs> long, short form of, of that. Of I love that though, because, you know, there's so many different aspects and so many different things to take away from what you just said. I mean, you know, from coming from a person who was very reserved, very closed off, you know, maybe a little, 
inside of their own head, um, as we both are. So we completely understand that. And then getting able or being able to experiment with different personalities when it comes to acting to try to kind of find your true inner self, right? I mean, I always credit this podcast and the company to me creating the social version of me because I am actually a very reserved person who doesn't really like to go out and do things. But then I can so turn crazy? on that. It is. It really is. It's wacky, you know, but I like that. I like that you said like the the parts of, of, of yourself because mm -hmm. when I first started acting and, and this is just my own, you know, uh, methodology of, of my my uh, my acting method and process. Mm -hmm. Um, and what I've like learned, I've been studying at Eric Morris um, uh, workshop studio. You're familiar? We've oh, heard. Yes. You're yeah. Familiar. Yes. He's amazing. And his processes and connecting to the self and thinking like we have like because I was such a people pleaser and mm -hmm. was at a very, you know, like crazy inner life as we all do, you know, but like uh, that helped me relate to a lot of different people but then I, I realized that I had all these different personalities <laughs> within me that yep. were like shining through to get whatever you know like when I was a kid you know get love or acceptance or these things that you know like you get when you are a bit of a people pleaser you like understand like okay how do I feel safe in this environment sure. and love especially as a kid because kids go through it man yeah they, they do right Exactly. Right. Not just from like home life. Parents do the best that they can, I believe, with whatever that's given to them. And sometimes it's, you know, it's different for everyone in that experience. Um, but, you know, even from other children who are like figuring it out, we're all acting like we know things and stuff <laughs> and going around pushing different buttons because we, you know, feel like we get the world and we need to tell other people how we get the world. So... Um, I went a long way with that, but um, just I love what you said within the different, it's like the different parts of yourself yeah, that right. can get in tune with and, and it's, and it's healing too, because mm -hmm. you start to understand those voices because there's the mm -hmm. voices that are good for this, like the social uh, aspect of you, but right. there is that inner critic that mm -hmm. you know sometimes can like hammer down on that social part which is probably what causes a lot of the you know yeah intro introvertedness it's word. Yeah. that's totally word <laughs> um, got it okay um but that part of you like you understand that that part then is just a part that's there mm -hmm. and will might be there is when you build it yourself up in the strength of <clears throat> the positive aspects that this uh, social part is giving mm -hmm. and bringing to you, that voice gets a little quieter because that voice is there in some way, not to like try and bring you down, even though it does, but right. to right. try and help protect you and keep you safe. Like, hey, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. And it's just, sorry, I know I went off on a tangent. No, no. You're good. I, we love it. Yeah, fascinating. I, I love... Yeah everything about that. And I like that kind of bringing it back a little bit when to know at such a young age that you can through art and through a story make a difference, right? You were saying, I, I, I saw my dad almost cry and I was like, whoa, wait a minute. And I can connect the connectability of what you're able to do with people through art is so critically important. We talk about it all the time about how sometimes uncomfortable situations you just don't want to talk about you don't nobody just sits down and says let's talk about this but when you see it through art when you're watching a movie or a television show or something like that it's so much easier to sit down after you've watched it and talk about what you just saw and right. leads into that uncomfortable conversation that talk, let's talk about yeah. what it was about kind of a thing and to know that at such a young age, to know that you would be able to eventually move and take stuff that you were dealing with and going through and put it into a character and into your art to connect to the world is amazing. And plus, kudos to you. Um, having a child is, is hard enough when you're a grown adult. 
having a child when you are so young and being able to do it the way that you have and to have this career and to do the things that you do, that's something really special. That is not an easy thing, parenting, like you said. We all do the best that we can. We all need a pass sometimes going, okay, maybe that wasn't the best move, but we did all right. Um, so for you to, for you to be able to, to do that, First of all, I think it took a lot of bravery and courage to say, I'm going to have this baby and I'm going to do it and I'm going to I'm going to try to get it all right. And then to dive into this career, which is a career built on rejection. and It's hard. And, and, and you're like, but you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. I got all this going on, but I'm going to try this anyway. That's amazing. So congratulations on that. Um, and and I, I see how you talked about your dad. I know you lost him, and uh, but to, to, you can see that you were getting really emotional about that, and that that's something really special too. Um, so I want to talk about that though. How you, because I think that you've probably been successful in your career for the same reason that that I think the most successful people are is when you can bring that connectability to your art. And people can connect to you. They resonate with you because they feel what you're bringing them. How do you approach characters or scripts or auditions when they're presented to you? Do you look for roles that you know will make an impact like that or something that you feel like you can bring something to? Uh, is that part of the process for you when you're deciding on what you're going to take? Uh, well, um, I think <laughs> I wish I was like that choosy. <laughs> I'm like, just bring me all the auditions. Please, what are, what please. One of like knocking them out. I think, you know, like, but what you are saying in terms of like what I can bring to this, I look with every single one of my roles. I forget. I think my acting teacher, um, Joe Police, uh, he's, or was it Joe Police? I've had a few. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an eternal student. Um, but um, had said, you are an advocate of your character. Mm -hmm. So in whatever role I'm, I'm looking at or absorbing for an audition, um, I'm like, okay, well, what, what can I bring to this? What humanity can I show? What part of my heart or personality resonates most with this? And how can I bring that truth and authenticity to this? Um, and you know, like doing stuff, for, but I mean, like, honestly, like, I'm like, I feel like I can do so much. So just like for me within getting auditions, I'm like, stretch me, like bring me something like kind of weird though. You know, some of those weird things are so much fun. I did this film called the hive. Yeah. Um, no freaking like clue necessarily like what was going on, but I like read this <laughs> script and I'm like, this script is crazy. I'm like, this Seems like I get to be like some kind of creature. Cool. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know. We like burnt out from auditions in life because like auditions were, like, you, I mean, thankfully, like I had, you know, a lot of auditions and have had the opportunity to have like a lot. And and so like being burnt out was is such a privilege. But I like came in there and we had a director session. I'm like, I'm just going to feel this out. And like I made this weird voice and I was like, like doing this stuff and like the director loved it. We just vibed. I'm like, okay, your weird matches my weird. Like let's like play and create, you know? Um, a lot of, but a lot of like, just like starting out, like I felt like I, I, I didn't know what to choose. I didn't know what to, I didn't know myself, you yeah. know? Like I feel like I started to learn more about myself through the experience of having these, uh, uh, having the roles and then getting the real life uh, experience of being on a set, you know, like I think a part of what got me those roles was a lot of like letting go mm. and, and, and allowing uh, when I wasn't so like gripped tight on getting it or being something. And I just was like, oh, fuck it. Like, yeah. let's just go, like, and it had fun or release. Like, those were the roles that I got. But thereafter, I was just, like, I was having a lot of um, imposter syndrome and dealt with a lot of, like, fear. And I was just like, okay, I've done a lot of growing up up into this point. Realized that so much about myself, continue now to realize so much about myself, but at those times, like, uh, 
being with others on set and being like, okay, I, I'm bringing the authenticity of this character that is to me, but I yet was not comfortable with my own authenticity. Mm -hmm. I wasn't yet comfortable with myself. And that in and of itself was a whole other journey and process. And I feel as though um, God, the universe, the divine, whatever you would like to call, whatever you believe in, the just the order and the journey of my life um, let me to have these, um, the kind of successes that I had, but it wasn't like to the moon, which I thought was going to happen with paranormal <laughs> activity. I was like, this is an international film. Oh, <laughs> my activity. I'm going to be all over the place. And then, you know, like, and then there was just a big lull and gap. Like you see the successes, but there was a lull and gap and so much happened within that gap. And I felt like, oh my God, like every single time I was like, I felt like, should I be here? Do they know? I don't know. <laughs> and you have to like, look, <laughs> like, do they know that I'm not supposed to be here? Am I supposed to be here? Blah, blah, blah. Um, one thing that I had to learn is like, if you're in the room, if you're in the place, you're supposed to be there. You're meant to be there. That's Even right. if you feel like you're not ready, if you're there, you are, you are ready as you will be to like mm -hmm. go and jump in and, and, you know, like looking back at like all the hours and the work and the struggle and the stress and the life experience that poured into that, that we soon forget sometimes when this gift uh, is in front of us or challenge, mm. you know? Yep. This is a, but it's a, it's a challenge. Like now you've done your work, you've taken, you know, the hours and uh, done your stuff, whatever. And now you have the job. And herein lies a responsibility that you already in 50, 75 percent have satisfied within the audition room. And mm -hmm. you forget that. <laughs> you did it. That's why you have the job. Yes. But now, you're, yes. Um, I, if you didn't notice, I go off on tangents. No, yeah, we no, you're, you're I mean, fantastic. Hey, just, these are the easiest ones to do because we just sit back and listen because obviously we love you enough to keep watching your content, but I mean, we love to have you here just talking. If you want to take over the show, and yeah. feel free. <laughs> right, we got segments that you could do. I mean, it'd be great. It'd yeah, be great. yeah. It's... But I mean, it's interesting too because you know you are put in so many different situations being so many different characters and so many different people, right? So, and especially with like a paranormal or a found because we love found and that's why you're here because we love found so much. <laughs> um, but with it being such a hardcore dramatic type of show how do you just you know how do you turn it off when you go home how do you leave it at work because it's one of those things where you're pretending all day to be this other person but then how what's your what's your mechanism what's your strategic thinking to when you get home how do you decompress because it's so important to not get stuck in that mental state because if you do i mean we see people either playing the same characters all the time or even worse, they go down their own mental sabbatic yeah, exactly. spiral, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, what's your process of shedding that skin to the point where you're back to being you again? Absolutely. Um, I, you know, this it's such a great question. I heard you ask it in, in one of the other episodes that I listened to. And it's actually something that, like, I desire to like find and like maybe create different processes for actors because of that you know like you have so many actors who are yeah, I don't know like looking into like ease that f with um drugs or alcohol and then you right. have like different like suicides and things like mm -hmm. that or just like not taking care of themselves and it leads to those things because it's a lot and I like to say you know like I, I, I desire and I'm still in that process and journey in my acting career to not, you know, like to, to not just to not be an actor, but to be a professional experiencer. So oh. when you are going into that experience, because all of my characters are just different versions of me turning up and turning down and fine tuning and and, and respecting the, the story and character obligations and all of that. Um, but you know, like I, I do believe that it's, it's, 
mostly what is going to help with the transition is the awareness of mm. like understand that when you're working on different characters that you are seeing things through the perspective of that character yeah and a lot of that has to do with the work that I've been doing in, in my acting class because we share how we feel just presently. Like it's not like about necessarily the scene that we're about to work on or whatever. It's just you ask yourself, how do, how do I feel? Uh, right now I feel I feel passionate. I feel um, excited. I kind of am like, oh, okay, you're moving and grooving, Gabby. I feel a little fine <laughs> here, you know, like right. oh, what you're talking about that's fun I feel funny I feel funny right now now I feel goofy you know so you're checking in with yourself but when you're like working on different material and you're having these interactions there is a part of once you start to connect with that material the subconscious is starting to go and to make those connections in life so especially if you've had like a very activating scene or piece that you've worked on when you leave and you go home and you're with your friends, your spouse, you might be seeing still through that lens. Mm -hmm. So it's important to be aware of that. So you know how to like transition, transmute and decompress in, in your own way. I know a friend who says like once they um, put off the, their clothes, because mm -hmm. uh, their character is very attached to their, you know, how they work is very attached to the objects that come into contact with their body, their coat. And, you know, mm -hmm. if they're feeling something heavy, they want a heavy jacket or heavy boots or something like that. Um, when they take off their clothes, they leave the spirit of that character there and they go and they move on. Of course, there's going to be residual because if it was real... Yeah. You're re really felt that. And it's, you know, like it's very cruel and impossible to be like, let's just turn this thing off. So doing something that is like uplifting, like talking to, you know, like talking to people. I use laughter a lot. My acting teacher calls me chuckles because I laugh <laughs> a lot. And, <laughs> you know, a part of that laughter is a part of just, you know, like learning how to deal with some of the severity that, you know, like life is thrown like, oh, this is crazy. <laughs> you know, like this is freaking ridiculous. Like what's happening here? Um, but, you know, like so like watching something funny, doing something that's going to lift your spirit, listening to a piece of music sometimes in in class she'll have us get out of our head by singing happy birthday mm. or something like that you know something to move yourself in a different position and i think two actors i well myself you know can fall into the trap of like oh i'm supposed to be feeling this way so i need to feel it i need to keep feeling it i need to stay in it and then they end up torturing themselves burning out, have poor health it, mentally and probably physically because um, it's a lot to put on your body. And and so being able to um, understand that when you uplift your spirit, it allows so much more room and access for you to go down deeper and go there again. And that's something that I didn't know until I started to trust that I was going to be able to do that mm. and that these things are here and they were available to me. So, you know, even if you're like, well, I want to fully experience, I want to be all like weird actor and like and get into it and like go and build a log cabin, which is really freaking cool. And I hope to work with that man at some point and pick his brain. But also, you know, like being okay with like coming out of it and, you know, whatever that is within your activation of self love, because we don't deal in the healed self in these stories. We mostly deal with the unhealed self, the trauma and the stuff that, you know, really gets to people and helps other people heal. So we got to have our self-care process as well yeah mm, yeah that's so yeah and and i i would have to imagine especially earlier on coming home to your daughter would wake you up real quick like i can't bring that home to my <laughs> to my child right a really deep intense I, you know, screwed up like i can't bring that home i've got to be aware here and be present here and w with what's going on there 
Um, I just, I love, I love that you, you, I like the way you keep referring back to, you know, your inner self and self love and, and the healing and, and you, you can tell that you're very spiritual in nature. You, you, you can tell that that's important to you. And I, I really, I really like that. Um, what, let's talk about found a little bit because that is a, that's an intense show. Right, you've got so many things going on, and and the background of your character, literally this 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 girl that's kidnapped to be a friend to another kidnapped girl. Basically, it's like, oh, hold on, she needs a friend. I've got to go get somebody else. Right? Um, yeah, it's crazy. And then you've got this person that basically you've gone through this trauma with, and you're doing all of this stuff with, and now she's lying to you, and now she's hiding something from you, and and having to deal with the the one person you trusted now is like wait a minute i can't even trust her um all of that is so intense and so like there's so much backstory going on there and so much stuff that you're bringing forward into it and then the dilemma of and spoilers out there for anybody who hasn't seen it but it kind of leaves off season one where uh, Lacey might be in trouble <laughs> it might be in trouble. sir is uh creeping he might be you might be in trouble so um yeah talk about where, what what that is with the dynamic because you guys all come across so well together on screen that chemistry there it, it's so believable you can it feels like you guys have been together forever it feels like when you're when you're when you're having a good moment it's a good moment when you're having an angry moment yeah you, you get to, they look like they've been in that angry moment before kind of a thing and the chemistry is fantastic so talk about the mix of the characters and how working with them and, and what it's been like on the show because it, it's just phenomenal how you guys are doing it it really is no thank you thank you so much and i'm i'm happy that that has come across and that we've been we're able to continue that i mean i think in terms of just like the character the, the chemistry between the actors, I think, like, yeah, you can't necessarily, like, demand or create that, like, no. from anywhere. I think that, you know, that lends to the casting of it, of Leah Daniels to um, Enkeche to, you know, D Domain, who was the director of the first, Domain Davis, who was director of the first episode. And, you know, uh, and Shinola, and Shinola and how she had you know, just been an exemplary, like leading lady that I have never experienced before. And just her warm, inviting and welcoming energy that uh, created this space for us to be able to open, mm. to be able to give, to be able to, to play, to be afraid to, you know, um, she's such a, she's such a beautiful mother in that way. A mother or sister like that that type of energy that like allows you to just kind of step outside of yourself and yeah. you know um and that's so important it's important um and just you know everyone like kelly i mean she's just she's a, a beautiful soul to work with her eyes speak volumes um arlen like there is like an ease and a peace within him that's just very calming to me uh, when we work, but there's also like a funny playfulness and like intellect that's just like, you know, it's so Zeke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's true. It's true. You know, and um, I mean, you know, just phenomenal casting and, and, and Karin and, you know, well, Karin, I, I like to, you know, absorb what I find on the page within the different characters and how they relate to me and how I feel like they're presented there and then meet the actors and I see the different pieces of their own just, you know, being that ties into that. Um, but Karin, I'm like, you're not, he's not this like broody dude. Like he's not that. He's funny. He's weird. He's like quirky. He's just super smart. He's, you know, he's a very nice, welcoming guy, you know, like, so I was like, oh, you know, like you're, you're a bit of a mixed bag, but still he has that inviting, that inviting energy is so important. And, and, and it's something that, um, you know, was an example that we were given through Shinola, but then also like spread on to, you know, all of anyone who came in, you know, as a guest star, which mm -hmm. I know was so important for me, 
to feel available to do my best work coming on different shows was to feel like it was I it was okay to be there that it was good that I was there that we were here together and you know you don't always get that and not that right. everybody's always you know like either they're they're welcoming or they're an asshole like everybody has their own process to do their work um but when you have that when you have that like hey welcome it just it just does so much for the work there it does so much for you being able to be present mm. because we're all putting ourselves out there in some to tell these stories but like what goes on is like we're gonna be judged <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be judged on our performances am i good am i meant to be here are people gonna like me there's like duh, 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 all these crazy things so to feel at least that sense of camaraderie and welcome welcomeness welcomeness Welcome. yeah sure yeah yeah uh -huh. Welcoming. <laughs> From people around you that you're creating with it's like <sighs> it, it really is that breath of fresh air right to be able to have these people who you feel like you can lean on who you can learn from um i feel like it's so important and i mean it's kind of like what we were talking about at the very beginning of our conversation where you <laughs> you have that different personality that you put on in front of the camera but then when you're able to shed that you're like okay let's let's be weird let's get let's have fun let's just be able to experience each other who we are let's learn from each other and be able to move forward i think that is such a beautiful thing and so it seems like such an amazing set from everything we've heard um yeah, it's just, I love that. I love to hear that. Um, something else that we are trying in 2024 is some popcorn questions. And I hope you are ready because boy, oh boy, they put you to the test. That's for I'll sure. It, I'll try to keep it short. <laughs> you're, you're good. No, you're hey, good. You're good. Um, you're good. Yes, I, I'm not a super I'm, We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Hey, if we have to do a fast version, it's fine too. We'll still answer some good ones. We'll oh, answer some good fast ones. Fast is not as. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what we do. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. That's, um, that opened up so many other things. Like right there. Like, okay. Right. Let's dive exactly. into that answer right there. Like, <laughs> Uh, All right, Logan, so fire away, it, buddy. I'm very curious, too, because I think this will be a fun one. Uh, what is the funnest moment or funniest moment or most memorable moment that you have had on the set of Found? Oh, there's so many. You know, like, I think my favorite part, and I listen to Zarya, so I'm not cheating, but, like, it is <laughs> musical numbers that come out of this group. <laughs> Mainly started by our leader Shinola and how uh -huh. they just like branch off into this whole thing. I I, I was like, because I do, I take a lot of like videos and stuff sometimes when I'm not like completely like in, self involved mm -hmm. um, in 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 Lacey or whatever I need to do. Um, but like, I, I recorded us. We we're singing like a song from the Lion King, like in the jungle, <laughs> just like in front. <laughs> like that like that's what happens and i'm like wow it's 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 really magical to have that because we're dealing with such heavy and you know deep content yeah that you know like we're able to kind of like balance it out with this like playfulness and this joy and you know i think again that allows for the permissibility to like just like open up and to go these places mm -hmm. so i think um singing a wimbo wit a wimbo wit a wimbo wit a wimbo wit there you <laughs> go one of my favorite moments <laughs> fantastic and also and also one of the craziest moments was when arlen hid my shoe <laughs> i don't i don't remember when i took off my shoe but I took off my shoe and then I came back into the scene and I couldn't find my shoe. And I was like, I just didn't know it. I'm like, here I go again, Gabby. Like you're forgetting something, you're over here, you're whatever. And it was like hidden on like a bookcase and nobody said anything. Like people knew where it was. And you know, we're on an NBC procedural show. Now for the pilot, we got four weeks, you know, like on right. the ongoing, once we got picked up, there's like less time, but I'm like, are we really? 
taking time for these shenanigans. <laughs> well, where would have the fun been, Gabby, in telling you where it was? There, That's no fun. We got to have you search for it, you know? Oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. Okay. That, with this, now, this makes me – I'm really interested for this one, too, because I like to dive deep into people's heads and see where they say. If you could live inside any movie or television show, which uh, one would it be and why? Okay. What popped up in my head? Treasure Island. Okay. Treasure okay. Island. I don't know why that popped into my head right now. Do I want to live there? <laughs> <laughs> Let me reevaluate my life decisions. I just, you know, I mean, I just love the Swiss family Robinson for some reason. And they went on these crazy adventures in the jungle. And there's just like, there's still like this journey of like testing of like will and might and strength and strength in the family. Like that would be like really cool. Um, and to meet some pirates, that would be really cool. Um, I don't know. And then also, like, when I heard you asking this, I'm like, uh, on a previous episode, I was like, Peter Pan. I'm like, I don't know what it is about, like, being lost somewhere. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, like, I, I just, I, I think it's kind of, like, magical. And I would love to fly uh, with Tinkerbell. And so Swiss Family Robinson, Treasure Island, or Peter Pan, somewhere mystical with pirates. Somewhere mystical with sure. pirates. That's fantastic. I can see it. No, totally. I can see it. Totally. Sure. I don't know why. I don't know why I chose that, but. Uh, that's funny. Uh, the next two ones are kind of deep, um, so be prepared for that. Uh, if you could go back in time, what would you tell oh. your 10 year old self? What piece of advice would you give them? 10. 10. What or 15. That's a very oh, monumental year for you as well. Mm. I, th I think if anything, I'd be say, I, I would say, um, don't be afraid to be yourself. Mm. The world is waiting for that. Mm. All the magic exists there and all the life exists there. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's, that's deep. And, and that's great advice. And, and wow. Whew. All right, the last one. And since you're a fan and you've been listening to the shows, you kind of know what's coming, but we got to ask anyway. Are you, where you're at right now, happy with your career? Absolutely. Ha Hell yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm like, I already cursed on the show. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. good. Oh, yeah, no, you're good. This is regular of a 22-episode show on network television. This is insane. This is insane to me. Like, it's 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 magical and 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 then um in 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 other ways makes a lot of sense from like not you know tooting my own horn type of thing but just like from the journey of life and where it has taken me and how i've evolved as a, as a human being in, in in the respect of the love that i've given my myself and mm -hmm. and um and and believed in this because it wasn't until like I actually believed and I didn't realize that that's what was happening that I didn't believe that I could do this and be here like I didn't believe it but that was something that was going on in the back of my mind and I think especially after we do audition after audition get no after no and rejection after rejection we kind of feel like we're misplaced mm -hmm. but I think that you know um I don't believe that I could be doing anything different or anything at least with that outside of the respect of you know what we do in creating stories and so like now that I feel like I finally gotten to the point where I'm like okay yes this is what I want and not just like being a, a series regular on a network television show blah 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 mostly just like feeling grounded in my art and in what I'm bringing to my art and in my own body and in myself and um, and, and, and in purpose and what I wanna share with the world. And so that's why this makes sense. And you know, like I wanna, you know, do, do really well in this life and leave something for the grandbabies given I have grandbabies, but leave a, a mark and an impression on people and, and letting them know that, you know, they're going to be okay, that it's okay, mm. and that there's all these different beautiful little weird, painful, uncomfortable parts of life that we go through to be able to really be happy. 
Yeah. Truly, I understand that. And not that you have to earn that, but in a way it is earned in a whole other uh, vividness and, and um, deliciousness of life. And so, yes, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, oh. I, I have to tell you, to, to, to kind of bring it full circle back to something that you said at the very beginning of it, you are exactly where you are supposed to be. That that's uh, you are exactly where you are supposed to be. So and and I think it's because of the person that you are. Just this interview was so captivating and so riveting and so emotional. And it, it, you know, it, it's like Logan said. I, we could sit here and just talk to you all day long because it's a joy to listen to you and and to hear what you say and and that the feeling and the passion that you say it with. Um, it, it's just you can tell that you are a genuinely good human being and and you are living life right. Uh, your daughter is blessed to have you. I, I can say that. I can tell that. I, you can see that from one parent to another. I can see she is blessed. Um, thank you so much for like coming on the show and, and just uh, having fun talking to us about it found and, and the career and everything. But even more so, life. The, the life advice I think that you delivered in this interview is just so fantastic and is going to help so many people by hearing you talk and, and the way you've been living your life, honestly. Thank you. Thank you. This was this was fun. This was a, a joy and I love what you guys are doing and keep freaking doing it and keep making movies and keep making magic. Yes. Like, you know, <laughs> Thank at you. the end of the day, like life is meant to be enjoyed. Yes. That, like let's have a let's have a good sure. time and, and, and take care of our hearts, but like let's in, enjoy this stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Well, open invite. Anytime you want to come back on this podcast, if you have something to promote or just to get a little crazy with us about different things or the mental health <laughs> podcast, you could definitely come on there anytime and talk about anything you would like um, because we dive deep into it. Uh, we call it our biweekly therapy session <laughs> because we are able to like, you know, let it all out. What's been our mind on our mind the past couple weeks or what stories can we, you know, let loose to where we don't have to hold on to those anymore. You know, it's those type of different things. Oh, wow. I think it would be perfect. We laugh, we cry, we, we you know, <laughs> we run yeah. the roller coaster of emotions. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's yeah. It, we really do, we really do. But you know, it's all about social media. So where can all of our fans, our listeners, where can they find you so we can support you as well? I am on Instagram mostly. I have not transitioned over to X. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm going And on. that's okay. Yep, you're good. Yep. I'm like, I'm going on a tangent and I'm like, I don't know if I want to read everyone's thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, and opinions always. But I'm like, I probably, you know, got to connect. But yes, Instagram. I'm on Instagram. I, Gabrielle Walsh. And, and just quickly, I want to tell everybody that follows you there or goes to follow you there. Check out the reels and Testimony Tuesday unbelievable little series that she does called testimony Tuesday. And you're going to get a whole lot more of what you got on this interview right here. You open up, you share stories, you share the good, the bad, the ugly and everything in between. And you let people know you're not going through life alone. They're fantastic. It's worth following her just for that. I'm just saying, just saying. Thank you. Thank you. You're right. welcome. I need to bring those back. I you do. Back. You do. I was kind of bummed. I'm like, wait, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> more testimonies to be had that was actually uh i could go into another story but like, it was it, it was very healing for me as well you could tell that was good that's good that's fantastic well listen thank you so much for coming on the show and getting a little crazy with us we really appreciate it take care and we'll be talking to you soon thank you Man, what a fantastic interview. And I mean, for everybody who was listening in the beginning, yes, the fire alarm <laughs> was going off. That's why we had to restart. But man, oh man, like she really was burning down the house. She right? was, man. She was bringing the heat. We knew it was going to be a hot interview and it was literally. Um, But you know what? What an inspiring interview too. I really liked how, how you know, obviously it was really fun talking about found and, and the whole approach to the character and how she's doing all that kind of stuff. But when she started getting deep about, hey, I've been going through some stuff and this is how I deal with that. And I was a, a young mom and I, so I'm raising my kid, but I didn't let it stop me from chasing my dream kind of a thing. That is so inspiring. I always feel like for people out there listening, going, you know what? Sometimes life happens 
doesn't mean it has to derail you from what you're trying to do or where you're trying to go. And I just love when people come on and say, that's right, you can do it still no matter what. And she's a prime example of that. Yeah, completely agree. Completely agree. Thank you again, Gabrielle, for coming on the show. All right, now it is time for the top five segment, man. And with it being the month of the Oscars, we're trying to stay consistent, trying to keep talking about all of these Oscar films. And so this week, it is Oscar-winning films based on true stories. And man, oh man, definitely had to do some research on this one because I felt (laughs) like, you know, there's so many that get swept under the rug because the big ones you remember from the Oscars are the best pictures. But there's so many other great films that come out. So I'm super excited about this because, like, there's so many in here that... I've watched multiple times and then had different opinions about, especially (laughs) my number five. Like the first time I watched Zero Dark Thirty, Mm. which is about, of course, the assassination of Osama bin Laden. I honestly with not I was mm, I was young. I would say I was probably in junior high or like just getting into high school. Um, So I really didn't enjoy it. But then I go back and watch it now. I'm like. This is a great freaking film. It's very tactical. It's very, you know, step by step how they executed this plan of attack. And I feel like, you know, it won for best sound editing, which makes sense because, you know, covert ops type shit. But to be able to have that new frame of mind to where you are able to change your opinions and that's allowed in society, guys. Yeah. Remember that you're allowed to change your opinions. But I feel like, you know, what Zero Dark Thirty did was give everybody is specifically in the united states an insight look of how this mission went down which was so important to a lot of us basically all of us um but yeah zero dark 30 man like i said uh one for best sound editing great film great film i really enjoyed it totally agree and that controversial because of Very. how that story went down, a lot of people were not so fond of. I mean, they, they didn't hide the fact that we were locking guys up in dark boxes and blasting loud music and waterboarding them. And a lot of people had problems with the way, <laughs> the way it went down. So, meh. But I love the movie. It was a fantastic movie. Uh, yeah. My number five, Amadeus, Amadeus, rock me, Amadeus. I freaking loved this film. He was so over the top. In the performance, in the lead role. This this movie, of course, is all about the life of, of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, obviously. Um, fantastic film. And it won, it basically ran the gambit, guys. It won Best Picture. It won Best Actor in a Leading Role for F. Murray Abram. Uh, Best Director. It won Best Writing Screenplay Based on Material. It won Best Art Direction. It won Best Costume Design. Best Sound. Best Makeup. Best Actor in a Leading Role uh nominee uh for tom holsey just the whole thing was i mean it was nominated and basically ran the gambit but if you like music and you like mozart you can't miss amadeus it's and like i said it was just they really go into the fact that he wasn't all there (laughs) i mean (laughs) And this movie really doesn't kind of hide that. And they're like, this guy was a little nuts. But um, it's a just, it's a brilliant movie. And every time I see it, I, I click on it and watch it because it was just one of my favorite movies when it came out. And I've seen this one quite a few times. So um, if you've never checked it out, be sure to check it out. It's called Amadeus, and like I said, it's about Mozart. So yeah, my number five, Amadeus. Love it, love it. My number four goes to the Imitation Game. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is in this one. Um, And it's about the 1939 newly created British intelligence agency, MI6. Yes. Um, And it recruits Cambridge, a mathematic alum, uh, Alan Turing, who, of course, is played by Benedict Cumberbatch, to crack Nazi codes. And this one was such a crazy story, and it won for adapted screenplay. Um, It's really freaking good, guys. I mean, not a lot of people talk about it, which is crazy. And, I mean, I... I can't say that I'm better than anyone else because I've seen it because I just watched it like last year. <laughs> so it's not <laughs> like anything crazy, but it's, it's really good. It's one of those, like, like we always say, and I mean, I feel like we're saying it more often now, but I mean, it's true. The best form of education is through entertainment and to learn about these historical events, I feel like is so special. Um, but yeah, check out the imitation game. Um, it's really freaking good. I mean, everybody loves Benedict Cumberbatch, so come on, 
Come on. Of course. Of course. You, you know, you're right, though. All of my top five are true stories. They're all real-life stories, real-life people, real-life events. I didn't even realize that, but it's true. I mean, uh, it makes sense <laughs> with the Oscar-winning films based on true stories. That is true. our top five. <laughs> it, it, it is true. It is true. But, but I mean, like, not even fictionalized. These were, like, full in, not just based yeah. on true stories, but, like, yeah. full in. So that's kind of – and I really love this one, The King's Speech. So mm. if you guys aren't familiar with this one, this is about Queen Elizabeth's daddy, King Edward VI, when he was – what do you mean I'm king? Fuck! Uh, and he had to give the speech. The problem is, and nobody knew, King Eddie had a speech impediment. And he was a stutter. stutter. And guys, this is, remember, he ascended to the throne during World War II. And he had to re- assure his country that he was the guy. That he was going to get them through this war and everything was going to be okay. And so this whole film is about his initial speech to his country saying, declaring I'm the king and I'm going to get us through this war and we're all going to be okay. Um, it's brilliant. I loved this film. They go deep into about how, how his wife found an interpreter, have found somebody to work with him on the impediment, get him past his fear of speaking and, um, and really solidified him as the king that we all know that he was. Um, and then of course, you know, his abrupt death and, and sparking Elizabeth into, you know, it doesn't go there. It stays very, very within King Ed, uh, the six is story. But, um, I personally didn't know it that I didn't know he had a speech impediment. I had never heard anything about that or that that was even part of his story. So to, uh, the first time I watched this, I was like, Whoa. What the fuck? Okay, I didn't know this. So, um, I again, like you said, learning history through art. Uh, Colin Firth is amazing in it. It's a brilliant film. It did win Best Picture. It did win Best Performance by an Actor for Colin. It won Best Achievement in Directing and Best Writing. So, um, uh, yeah, it was it was a, it was slaying. So it did pretty well. But uh, number four, The King's Speech. Yes, I love it. I love it. That's still on my list so oh you will love it i'm telling you it's a really good film it really is yeah for sure for sure well number three for me goes to the fighter this one of course is about mickey ward and man oh man the family drama this man had to endure during his rise as the legendary boxer um, but this one won for Best Supporting Actor and Best Supporting Actress, which makes sense because, I mean, Christian Bale was absolutely amazing oh, yeah. as Ward's brother. Um, but, yeah, I just feel like, you know, I, I the, the rewatch value on this film is amazing. Um, I, I can't even tell you how many times I've watched this. But, I mean, everybody has that family member who you're like, okay, they're a little out there. Okay, we got to watch out for them. Okay, we got to, like, take care of them. And you'll definitely connect with it with this film. Um, definitely one of my favorites, to be honest. If we ever did a top five boxing movies, The Fighter would definitely be on mine. Ooh. Um, yeah. Maybe I that's know. next week's. <laughs> I like that. Maybe, I maybe. love that. Um, but yeah, number three for me is The Fighter. Mm, good choice. Good choice. All right. My number three it's one of the most iconic lines probably and it's used over and over and it's in memes it's everywhere it's a freedom i'm talking about my boy mel gibson when he yells freedom on the horse with the war paint on his face and everything braveheart this is of course the true story about william wallace the scottish warrior that tries to fight for the independence of his country from king edward the first i just told you about king eddie the sixth this is king edward the first that was under overrule of scotland and this was about the freedom and independence of trying to break free this one is epic it's an epic story of fighting for freedom and coming out from oppression and and sometimes the tragic deaths that that requires to to break free from that stuff mel gibson was fantastic in it it won for best picture obviously it won best director for mel gibson it won best cinematography uh best effects and sound editing best makeup i mean it it was an epic story if you guys have not seen it it's brilliant history and one of my favorite mel gibson films it's just it's so well done and it really pulls at the heartstrings about man this is what it's like to be oppressed and have to sacrifice everything 
to get out of it. It, it. It's just, it's an amazing film. Braveheart, my number three. Mm, that one's still on my list too. I haven't seen that one yet. Um, but man, oh man. Number two for me is something special. That's for sure. Because everybody knows how much I love the one and only Black Bomba, Kobe Bryant. And I feel like, you know, if he wasn't taken from us so soon, I feel like he was going to be more involved in the entertainment industry um he is oh, an oscar yeah. winner i'm not sure a lot of people know that but he did win for best animated short film with his short film dear basketball where basically he's hanging up his shoes you know he is saying goodbye to the game he's known and loved all of his life um not a lot of people knew but his dad was also a basketball player played overseas and then that's where he fell in love with the game and that's where he was finally able to feel like he become, became himself. Um, but yeah, Dear Basketball, I still go back and watch it now. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a short form film that's available on YouTube, so everybody can watch it. Um, but yeah, man, I would definitely say Dear Basketball is one of my favorite Oscar winning films of all time. So there it is. There you go. There you go. My number two is uh, I had to put it on the list because he's my guy. Yeah, he's related <laughs> literally my number two is Patton one of the greatest films of all time George C. Scott was freaking phenomenal in the lead role as jo General Patton um this bad boy won uh the best picture Academy Award S George C. Scott did win for best actor but refused to accept the w award he said he just didn't feel like he was in any competition with the other actors so he refused to accept it uh Gave it back. They gave it back. Uh, it also won for Best Director. It won for Best Writing. It won for Best Art Direction. Uh, best Sound. Best Film Editing. Best Cinematography. Uh, I, I, this thing was like, uh, no, sorry, nominated for Best Cinematography. But it was an epic telling of the story of General Patton. Uh, and yeah, I, I've dug deep into the history of this man just because he is. I found out I was related to him and I'm like, Okay, I got to know more. So uh, he's distant cousin on mom's side somehow, somewhere, some way. Uh, went to the Library of Congress to dig it up, find out. Um, but hey, listen, I don't know if this one's on your list, but it is an epic telling because he was uh, one of the most revered generals in U.S. history, but not always mm -hmm. liked. Uh, he did some controversial stuff and he did not give a shit whether you liked it or not. <laughs> so this movie kind of highlights that. So if you haven't seen it, guys, check it out. Patton, my number two. Yes, yes. That one is on the list because I haven't seen that one Oh, it's either. so good. So good. Um, number one for me goes to 1917. Of course, this one is about World War I British soldiers. Um, it definitely won Best Cinematography, Best Sound Mixing, and Best Visual Effects, which all makes sense because they shot it to where it was that one continuous shot, mm. and it was absolutely beautiful. I believe can't remember if it was ridley scott or sam mendez one of those two maybe sam mendez yeah i think um, so but they they did amazing i love this film i love the the song that's at the very end mm. like it's something special it makes you feel like you're right there with all those young men who are fighting for their country um but beautiful movie beautiful i mean it very much well deserved these awards but i also was pulling for best picture it's fine it's fine <laughs> uh, but yeah 1917 man my number one <sighs> great choice great choice i loved it it was hard to watch sometimes in the theater but it but it was totally yeah yeah my number one argo of course, I had to put it on the list because it's a true story about getting the hostages back from Iran and how that all went down. And it's a lot to do with Jimmy Carter, but really Ronald Reagan. Uh, and they touch that very briefly. They kind of really make this a love thing for Carter, but the whole reason they were kidnapped in the first place is because of Carter and what he did that they didn't like. Um, but uh, the, anyway, if you don't know the story, this is about an uh, uh, operative, a CIA operative mission undercover where they pretend to be filmmakers location scouting for a film. But they're actually operatives going in and, and taking care of business and, and arranging and getting our hostages back out. Uh, John Goodman, Ben Affleck. This thing is an amazing cast, an amazing film. And in my opinion, I'm just going to say it, uh, I think this is what solidified 
in my opinion, Ben Affleck as like this guy's a director. This guy mm. is like I I think he this is where he should be. He's good in front of the camera, but he's great behind the camera. Uh, this thing won for best motion picture of the year. It won for best writing. Best Achievement in uh, Film Editing. It was nominated for Best Performance by an Actor. Nominated for a bunch of stuff. But in my opinion, even though Ben didn't win Director, it's it was the movie for me that put it over the top. That he's like, this guy knows what he's doing and he's got a huge career as a director. And one of the most famous lines ever, and one of my favorite lines in, ever muttered in a movie, are go fuck yourself. <laughs> it's literally the name of the movie but there's literally a line in the movie where somebody's having a back and forth with him and he responds with argo fuck yourself brilliant brilliant but anyway my number one if you want to know the true story of how it all went down and we got the hostages back from iran and that whole deal thing before reagan was sworn in as president argo you will find out the history so there it is love it man love it well let us know your favorite Oscar-winning films that were based on a true story. Please be sure to comment in the YouTube comment sections, add us at X or on threads, or in the podcast comment section. We want to know. We love the fan interaction, so please be sure to reach out. Yes. Um, now heading over to the box office recap, Bob Marley, One Love, was still number one with $13.4 million. Demon Slayer, uh, Kimitsu Ya Ebeda. With sure. eleven point five million at number two, Ordinary Angels at number three with six point one, Madam Web at number four with five point nine, and Migration number five with two point eight. I can't believe Migration is just hanging around, man. That animated it duck is. film kind of thing. It's like been there forever. I feel like for sure, for sure. Well, it's gonna be gone this week. That's for sure. <laughs> for sure, new movies coming out. Dune Part Two. The Closest to Pride, Memoirs of Shreveport, Runaway Radio, Gami, um, and Le Uh That's a re-release. So <laughs> yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. With Bowie. Um, David Bowie. Yeah. Movies Nobody's seeing any of that shit. No. It's all doomed. It's all doomed. Like, come on. And of course, movies you can still go see right now. The Beekeeper, Anyone But You, Argyle, Poor Things, and American Fiction. Love it. Love yes. It. And the IMDb Pro's top trending segment, Sydney Sweeney is number one, True Detectives hanging on with the um, top trending TV show, and the top trending movie is Madam Web, which Sydney Sweeney is in, and also Anyone But You. So she's killing it right now she with is. two big movies in the top five box office. But man, oh man, everybody, thank you so much for getting crazy with us on episode 252 of It Calf Podcast. We got to thank our guest one more time, Gabrielle Wash, for coming on the show and getting a little crazy with us. Yes. And, of course, be sure to follow her on Instagram because I believe that's the only one she's on. And Watch Found on NBC Universal and Peacock. And then, of course, you can follow the company and podcast on social media at Crazy Ant Media on all social media and at ItCap Podcast on all social media. And, of course, be sure to subscribe and follow to our new our new, our uh, mental health podcast, <laughs> Everything's OKP on all social media and Everything's OK on uh, so, or on podcast platforms. Yes. And you know you can follow this podcast and subscribe to this podcast um, on Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play Music, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Stitcher, and so much more. And, of course, YouTube. Like, subscribe, do all the things there. And you guys know you can follow us personally on social media. Myself, at J. Logan Austin, and at Crazy Ant CEO. That's right, man. That's right. And be sure to visit our website, www.crazyantmedia.com, where you start rocking the ladies and greatest Crazy Ant Media gear. 20% off, like I said at the very beginning, so be sure to check that out. But, man, just another great episode. Another great episode. It's another one in the books. And uh, I got to say, Gabrielle's interview, that was honestly my favorite part of the whole show. Yeah, no doubt about it. She's inspiring, and and she's just a gem, and she's living life right. And she's, she's, yeah, it was definitely one of my highlights as well. Probably one of my all-time favorite interviews, honestly. It it was just really, really good. And, of course, you know, with Suits and Superman and, and Airbender and all the kind of stuff that we we got into we love all that too but um yeah man just a really good show for sure for sure and of course we love the one the only oprah